Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on how I, yes me, <laughs> create um, my thumbnails for my uh, what you colors for my videos let's go ahead and um open one up i'm actually going to show you first in adobe photoshop and then i'm going to show you guys um how in um gimp which is a free photoshop program but i figured i would show you how i do it originally what i use originally and then go ahead and show you other alternatives in a different video in case you don't have photoshop or adobe um because it is kind of expensive so anyway this is just an example of one of my thumbnails this is the barnesboro uh, i have all of my thumbnails here my templates i always save my templates um so that i can just go back in and edit them the template for the barnesboro's is i believe this one right here so this is just kind of an example of what goes into making one of these logos. So a first thing you're going to need is obviously um, you're going to need Photoshop. I use Photoshop, um, Adobe Photoshop CC. You can actually get the trial version for it. Um, and I think it runs about like two weeks or something like that. And you can test it out, see if you like it. I do know that you can rent Adobe Photoshop for $9.99 a month. Um, so I think that's a good option for, you know, a lot of people who don't want to fork out the, the full, full amount there. So that's one of the options. And then also, you know, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can, um, try out in, in Adobe. And I love Adobe. I've been using Photoshop for as long as I can freaking remember. Like seriously, it's amazing. I love it. So what we're going to do is start a new template. Um, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and select this one uh push copy now this is just going to be a very simplistic background i'm going to be making this background for this video or thumbnail for this video so i'm just going to go through the dimension sizes i use um and things of that sort i'm not really showing you how to use photoshop i'm showing you how to create a banner once you're in photoshop so it's very simple um when you open up photoshop you're just going to click new um if you can you can also do this enter in the template I use um, a four 480 by 269 template for my banner or my thumbnail and that's just kind of my setting so we're gonna go ahead and do that there you go blank page the first thing you're gonna want to do when you have the background is you can either pick a background color um, or you know if you want to do something kind of solid you can just go ahead and kind of go in here and pick something out say you want green okay um get this little bucket tool fill it in there then you're going to want to create a layer a layer is basically um say you wanted to go ahead and you know put it put a design obviously you wouldn't pick the same color hold on a second there we go you want to put a design on top okay say you don't like that design you can just go in here and um delete that layer and your work underneath isn't tainted versus here oh you don't like it well now it's stuck to the background as you can see and there's nothing really you can do about it so that's why i always say if you're going to add something on top of your image always first add another layer so what i like to do is um i always have photos excuse all this mess um i'm pretty sure this is gimp test not pimp test um I like to take pictures of my Sims in CAS, um, and I basically, in a nutshell, uh, it's just the easiest thing to do. I use these guys, but first, before I import them in, I kind of think, okay, what kind of background do I want? What do I have in mind? So I'm going to go to um, my electronic arts files, go into Sims 4. We're gonna go into screenshots, okay, here, and say I like, um, let me see, what do I like here? Okay, this one, for instance, okay, I like this one, or, or this one, all right, so we're just gonna kind of import it in there, and we're gonna, actually, I'm not gonna place that file quite yet. We're gonna put it in, and you're just gonna like drag it, and find kind of the right place to, to put it, whatever, makes you happy so say I kind of like that a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and place that file 
So we're gonna go ahead and rasterize the layer. So that makes it editable, I think is the word. Not edible, but editable. So now that we've got that in there, what I like to do is again, just make sure I like where it's positioned. Um, typically I go into image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I play with the settings a little bit. I like to kind of, you know, oomph up the pictures a little bit. Say you, some, you want something really bright and contrasted, you would kind of have your brightness and contrast to the end, or say you want something a little more muted and dark, same thing, just opposite sides of the pendulum there. So I'm going to go with this and, uh, go ahead and do that. Now let me see. Um, one of the main things actually I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, I'll show you guys, I'm going to talk about brushes and stuff where you can get brushes for Photoshop, things like that. My favorite types of brushes. Again, this isn't the most perfect tutorial in the whole entire world, but Hey, I am definitely giving it a go. At least you guys can kind of see how I do it. All right. So let's go ahead and drag in little Miss Muffet here and we're going to go ahead and place her in. Um, there's easier ways of doing this, but I just am doing it the easiest way for, you know, tutorial sake. So just go ahead and kind of place her in a little bit. You're just going to click the little arrow and click place. There she is. All right. Trying to get those arrows out of the way. I could have probably took in a better photo of her, but we're just going to go ahead and leave it like that. So next to get rid of this border back here, all that you have to do um, is click the little wand basically with a sparkle on the end and click the background click delete oh just joking you have to rasterize the layers i forgot to do that okay so now we're going to rasterize the layer now we can go ahead and do it uh and then just kind of delete all the little weird things in the background there okay so then once you've got that you can go ahead and click select deselect and there you go. She's kind of in the background there and you can remove her if you decide that's not the picture you like or what have you. Um, so let me see. I'm just going to kind of fix her up a little bit. Don't mind that. That's whatever. Nobody cares. Okay. So we're just going to use this little eraser and kind of clean up the edges a little bit. Sometimes I like to clean them up, make it look a little more softer. So what I like to do when I have um, my Sims in is I also like to go into images, adjustments, ah, crap, images, adjustments, brightness, contrast, kind of brighten her up and mute the contrast a little bit. Um, I also go into filters, sharpen, smart sharpen, and those are my current settings for a different project. So we're going to have to go and kind of just play around and adjust. Now that's the thing about um, creating your own thumbnails. Like you have to mess around. You have to explore. You, you're not going to be a pro right away. I've been doing this since I was 13 years old. Like I was not born out of the womb knowing what to do with the with Adobe. So what I like to do is um, I like to double click my layer here. And back here you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can kind of be level her and make her look a little more 3D than she already is. Um, I personally like to be level. I like to um, sometimes do the strokes. Depends on how good it's cleaned up. Um, you know, you can do uh, my personal favorite outer glow. Kind of just gives them that softy, soft smoke um, outside there. And then drop shadow, which kind of creates a little more dimension. So what we're going to do for Little Miss here, and you can notice like all this stuff is kind of popping up. We can clean that up later. So I'm just going to do a little depth and dimension on her. I'm going to use white though. And then so you can kind of see like where her hairline is back here. It's like the sun's reflecting on her. It just looks a little more, uh, I don't know, real, I guess. I don't know. And then do some drop shadow. I like to just kind of um, size it up and spread it out a little bit. So this is definitely not going to be my best work because obviously I'm, you know, doing it on camera and it takes me a really long time to, not really long, like maybe 30 minutes to create a good thumbnail. But yeah, that's just kind of what we've got going on so far. So there she is. Um, now let's see. Google is your best friend. So on Google, I like to look for a lot of different backgrounds to kind of spruce things up. I personally like to look at mod, modern uh, backgrounds that kind of thing. So let's just do that and see what we find. Um, and then I just kind of use whatever I like pretty much. So I kind of like 
these textured ones here, like carbon fiber, or um, let me see if I see anything. I'll fit this image, kind of like this one. I think this would fit the background a little bit. I know it has numbers and stuff, but like you're not gonna really see all that. That one looks perfect. So all I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is just right click, copy image, and I should be able just to paste this right down. So if this happens, um, we're gonna go ahead and drag it beneath our um, layer with our sim. So to make this a little more transparent, you're gonna click this op opacity and you're just gonna kind of drag her in there. See how it kind of gives you this illusion. Also to kind of mesh it in a little bit better, I like to do overlay here. So it kind of adds the pattern but keeps the color of the background. See, look how pretty that looks. Just a little extra oomph. It's very small details, but trust me, it really makes the world a difference. So I'm actually going to blur out my image. I love to blur out my backgrounds. I think it just looks more, you know, put together. It just adds more contrast to the sim, that sort of stuff. So all I like to do is use, um, I think it's called gas and blur. I don't know, but for motion blur, it makes your background like this, which I love. Um, the, Gosselin, I think it's called Gosselin, I don't know, Gosselin, <laughs> the Gosselin blur, um, kind of makes things just a little more out of focus. And the cool thing is, is if you only want to blur a certain part of your image, make sure you're on that layer you want to blur, and then click this little dotting tool here, and just drag it out, see, there we go. And you can just go into your filters and motion blur. See, now that part's the only part that's blurry. I think that is so cool. It really, really, really helps make the text pop. And I actually kind of like that one. So we may stick with that. Um, there's also ways to just make this blurry and then keep the background. So let's go do that. We're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna copy this. So now you should have that layer copy. So you'll have, um, Basically, see, now you have just that little piece and this piece. So you can do two different blur styles if you wanted to. You could go ahead and um, Gossam blur the background, keep that in focus, or, <laughs> I almost said aorta, or you can blur, um, blur, boop, 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 just this guy so there you go see that looks really 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 cute I think it looks crazy right now but looks cute so this is just I'm showing you techniques things you can do to spice, spice up your backgrounds um that's what you can do those are just a few things you can do and then see I like doing that where you have control over these two pieces because now you could even go back and make this like just one color or whatever you know adding layers and and kind of adding that dimension to your to your um, palette here really adds flexibility, which is amazeball. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of spruce her up a little bit. So she fits, oh geez, she fits the background a little more. So we're going to go ahead and spread her out. There we go. Okay. I think she looks glorious. Now let's talk about, um, paint brushes really fast. So for the paint brushes, um, I have so many. I like to go, and I have these links and stuff down below. I have, I like, and my favorite ones. I like to go to DeviantArt. Um, that's a really good place to get brushes. They're safe, that kind of stuff. Um, and my favorite kind of brushes are probably, let me see, um, these Rising Sun Starburst. No, that's not even freaking it. Let me see. Here it is. Rising Sun Starburst shots. I'll just kind of give you a demonstration here. Remember, if you're going to add a paintbrush on top of your picture, add a layer. Okay, it's like insurance in Photoshop. So pretty much that is what a starburst looks like. And I know it looks crazy right now. And if you accidentally um, color something the wrong color, you can just go to color overlay. Once you double click that, that layer there, go to cover, color overlay and you can play around with different colors. So you can always see what looks best. You see what I'm saying? How cool is that? So say we didn't want black, we wanted white. Go ahead and do that. You can do overlay. Um, actually, you can't do overlay in here because then it will just show the color you had originally had. But, but you can do overlay here, <laughs> and uh, it kind of works. Maybe not. Maybe not. No, no, it doesn't work. I guess it would only work if that was the original color. But you can kind of, yeah. There you go. There you go. That's kind of what I meant. So see, I like that because it just adds a little something to the background, a little extra 
little extra pizzazzle. You see what I'm saying? And then you can just kind of make it fade out a little bit more. So that's one of my favorite brushes. Okay. Um, again, play around. Get to learn your style. Just because I have a certain style, you don't want to copy me. Everybody has their own style. So this is just kind of how I do it, what I like to use, that sort of thing. So another one um, that is my personal favorite, okay, are overline brushes. And they look like this. They have like little lines to them. Um, I'm going to use black so you can see it, but it doesn't really look that good. So that's an overline brush. Pretty much it just adds these little stripes and stuff to your to your photo I love them I love these since I can remember pretty much you can even try with different colors and, and stuff like that so you like that blue there and then just put it behind the actually you could put it on top of the rising sun and then you could go ahead and kind of fade it very so slightly until you just barely notice it I don't know if you can see that but barely notice it just adds that little that little extra oomph so those are one of my favorite br brushes so we've got sunburst brushes line brushes my ultimate personal favorite has got to be some glitter glitter brushes i love glitter oh my god the obsession is real you can find the glitter brushes under glitter obviously you can find them under star brushes those are my personal favorite because i kind of feel like they work the best these are also um a few of my favorite types of brushes here like these little star guys if you can see it love that so that's that's one of my favorites. I love these. These don't look too good on this background particularly, but they're just star brushes. You can really create a different, a whole bunch of different types of effects. So let's go to stars and blinks. I think that would work. Okay, so stars and blinks. Um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of add a little, oh, I got to make sure I put in another layer, a little sparkly. Just kind of make it look so cute. Okay. And then there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and overlay this one. See, now it works because the color. So, um, and then fade it out a little bit to make it kind of blend more in the background. See, there you go. All right, so just for um, tutorial sake, I'm gonna show you guys how to put in the Sims logo. So the Sims 4, we're gonna do logo here. And I'm gonna show you how to do kind of what you did with the Sim and getting rid of the background. So we're just gonna right click, copy image. And then we are going to click paste. And you're going to notice, holy guacamole, that's big. What do I do? It's very simple. So all you do is you go to um, image, actually edit. That's a good question, Jennifer. What do we do? I'm like brain farting right now. Image. Oh, select all. Sorry. Nope, just joking. Edit. Nope. Nope. Okay. Transform. Okay. Edit. Transform. Free transform. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you press, okay, if you just do it like this, it's going to make it all wobbly, dobbly, dobbly, and then all of a sudden, this is what's going to happen, and that don't look right. So what I like to do is whenever I am putting in a new image, make sure you're on that layer, go to edit, uh, free transform, press the CTRL button, and just joking. Don't do that either. What the hell? Why, why is it? Okay. Just joking. Press the shift button. Okay. Let's try it again. Press the shift button and just pull it in. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not used to really talking um, on camera too much when I'm doing this. So I kind of forget, but yeah, it's the shift button and then pull it in. So then it kind of keeps it what it's supposed to look like. And it looks amazing. But if you did use the, um, let me show you guys. If you did use a CTRL, it kind of gives it a little more like dimension, I guess, which in certain circumstances, I guess could look pretty cool. You know, if you want to do depth of field um, sort of thing. But yeah, so what we're going to do is click this little guy again. Okay, the little wand with the sparkle. And we're just going to click it. And you're going to see that it has all these little dotted lines. Press delete on your keyboard and just kind of delete all of the other black spots and then click select deselect so now that you've got him um, you can just kind of place him whatever um, and then do drop shadow be level emboss that's what that does contour um, texture that kind of thing I actually really like the way that looks so for usually things like this I do like to add drop shadow um, I like to do some outer glow on occasion and I like to spread it out to make it look a little more softer. 
Um, with really clean images like this, uh, it's, sometimes it's good, depending on the situation, to add in some um, stroke, or I call them borders, so let's just call them borders. And if you do like maybe a darker version of the color itself, so like say it's blue, you just kind of go down a little bit harder or find wherever it looks good. It just kind of looks the best. So there you go. And you can also do color overlay if you wanted to. Let's get rid of that um, border there. Color or overlay hue. And that kind of just changes the, um, in blend mode there, that kind of just changes the color of your thing. And each one does different things. Like you can kind of just experiment here. See, like, look how that made it kind of rainbow -y, like a popsicle. Ooh, I love it. The really, the fun thing is just playing in Photoshop. You can never, I learned all of these random techniques through trial and error. Um, there really isn't a certain way of how to create something in Photoshop. There's many ways to create the same thing. Okay, so let's do gradient overlay, which is kind of like a gradient, obviously. When you go into the gradient color, you can pick all sorts of things. Um, or you can pick from what your color palette is over here. Or you can go in and manually um, pick from like your background or something, whatever your heart desires. So then there's different types of um, like radical where the, the, con the lightest color is concentrated in the center or you can reverse it, I think, and then now it's like that. So like I said, there's just some highlights of things that I like to use. Uh, since we're not gonna be using this logo in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just exit out. Um, I'm gonna go pick up a Adobe Photoshop logo though. And you gotta be careful what you use too. Sometimes things are, you know, um, copywritten. So you need to be very careful what you use. I usually try to look for free backgrounds, free images, royalty free, that sort of thing. If you do edit it beyond recognition, <laughs> um, then it's yours. And it, from I, what I believe, like if you really, really edit it, but uh, nobody's really gonna notice. And I guess that's not a nice thing to say, but it's true, nobody's really gonna notice. But I personally like to avoid all that sticky confrontation and I personally like to use royalty free images, which most of them um, people don't care. But it's just, I'm just saying for YouTube's sake, be careful what you use, be careful. Don't use celebrity pictures, things like that, because nine times out of 10, unless you've taken the picture yourself, it's copywritten, just saying. But I don't know, use at your own discretion. So we're gonna put the Photoshop logo here. Okay, I'm loving how this is turning out, so pretty. I'm gonna add a little um, drop of, uh, drop shadow here. And um, I'm gonna also go ahead and maybe do a little stroke. We're gonna put in a white background for this guy. And if you play with the size, it will kind of adjust it and make it bigger, smaller, that sort of thing. Outer glow, nah. Okay, so I think that's a little too big. Let's do three. So now we got our Photoshop thing. I'm gonna actually show you guys how to add um, decorations on top of images. So all that you're gonna do is take your mouse, you're gonna go on to your image right here, and you're gonna click uh, CTRL on your keyboard and then click the image, it selects it. Remember, create new layer, and then from here you can add things like, say you really wanted to bedazzle the crap out of this button. Yeah, that, oh, Jesus Christ, that scared me. Um, so there, you got like lots of, lots of glitter bedazzles, right? You can go into overlay, kind of make it look like it's a part of that that picture there and you can even um, kind of fade it out just a little bit and voila that's what you have how pretty or if you don't like it you can just completely remove it but isn't that cool I love it so um yeah I, I'm gonna have to get rid of this little dude because this is not Photoshop CS3 but anyways it doesn't matter you probably won't even be able to see it um okay so what else was I going to show you what else is something I like to do mm. Can't remember, but let's go ahead and add in some text. So we're gonna go click the text thingy here. Let me just make sure I'm still recording. Okay, so we're gonna click the text thingy here and we're gonna drag our text. Okay, so make sure that you can see it um, and that it's a color that you can see. You can actually change the, the sizing here um, and just type whatever you want to type. So for instance, I'm going to do um, how I or how to, sorry, how to create some, hold on, thumbnails in, I can't see what the hell I'm doing, you guys. <laughs> make that a little bit smaller, Jennifer. Come on, you can sew it, boo-boo. How to make, how to create thumbnails in, girl, hold on, thumbnails in 
Adobe CC. Adobe. Actually, Adobe. Fave Tube Shop. Oh, my nails! Okay. Adobe. We'll just do Adobe PS, okay? Just make it easier. So, there we go. You can actually even kind of drag it out make it look like whatever you want it to look like so there we go you can also make it center if you want which I think in this case it may look a little bit better um, but I'm gonna actually put this guy right here and probably drag this guy down a little bit so it kind of mimics what we're doing there we go doesn't look too perfect but hey I'm not worried about it are you okay so let's just bring that up a little bit there we go it looks pretty good so if you want to change your font I'm actually using a custom font right now it's called rod regular <laughs> and you can just kind of look through your fonts I, I download a lot of fonts I know somebody asked me what one I was using for my banner that's it right there um, it's called admiration pains I think and I just look through Google you know free free um, free fonts that sort of deal and yeah all that they do is just kind of look until I find something I like kind of like this one here um and that one fits perfectly with our project so we're gonna go ahead and make it kind of bigger here because I want people to see it just FYI this lower section like the right I would say let's just kind of give you a description this much here is usually where the time stamp is so yeah don't put anything in that lower corner if you actually want it to be seen and then up here is where the watched stamp is normally so just saying if you really care about what you're putting up in those corners these corner that corner don't put anything in it just saying so um i'm gonna try to make it a little more beefier here because i don't feel like that one's a good way to see it okay so this one's a little bit better um kind of right so let's just make this a little bit smaller select all and then there we go just make it a little bit more smaller I suggest big bold fonts when you're doing this kind of stuff okay so we're gonna go ahead and double click uh, give it a drop shadow go ahead and even add in some um, different types of you know whatever the hell you want to do I guess really <laughs> just whatever you just try to you know play around see what color looks the best um, and I, yeah, I mean, I can do more, um, more like in-depth tutorials and how I do things more like this is just kind of beginner stuff right now, but yeah. So play it around, um, see what you like. We're probably going to move her a little bit out of the way here. Um, there we go. See, I just felt like she was too low in the frame. So now she looks a lot better. Um, so the very last thing that I am going to do and the same thing oh the same thing that we did for this little logo over here with the control C um, and being able to put glitter just on that image and not the whole thing same thing control C on the text and then new layer and you can do pretty much the exact same thing as you just did but we're not gonna do it in this one so it works for text too if you want to make the text a layer um, you just click rasterize type right rasterize type yeah and then you can convert to smart object and rasterize layer and what that does is basically all of the different um you know little doodads that you add extras if you will little doodads that you added to it it just compacts it into one file okay it makes it smaller so you don't have all this extra stuff but you won't be able to go back and edit the text or you won't be able to go back and you know say hey you don't want the drop shadow or whatever the case is okay so just so you kind of get what I'm saying um, yeah so there is that the very last thing I'm going to do in our image probably here um, is go ahead and add a background or not a background but a um, a border so I don't know an easier way to do this so I'm just gonna show you guys the way I do it I basically create another layer and put it at the tippy top I grab the little bucket here and place it right on top and then you're like oh my god where'd my image go okay well we're just gonna go ahead and grab this little dude out over here little mr. dotted guy he's a selection tool um, I try to get this as perfect as I can and I place it to where I want my thickness just kind of line it up the best you can. This is not going to be perfect, but that's okay. 
And then once you got that, you just hit, see this is a little too big, you hit delete on your keyboard. If you don't like it, just go step backwards and then you can um, try it again because I think that was a little too thick to be honest. Okay, just kind of etch it in there. All right, so that looks okay. Not perfect, but whatever. So when you have your background, you can kind of decide where you want to place it. Say you want everything else to be on top of it or, or whatever. I like to play around with the opacity. Um, that's always fun, playing with the opacity. Or if I wanted to, I could go into color overlay and I could play that way. Different types of colors. See, it does different types of sort of things, which I kind of like. Or you can even give it a, a gradient effect. How cool is that? So I like, actually kind of like the gradient effect. So we might stick with that one. And honestly, I think that's just about it. There's other things I like to add in here when it comes to um, editing The Sims. I like to go into Filter Gallery. I don't like to make them green, so we're gonna have to swap that out. Whenever you're using the Diffuse Glow, you have to make sure that the white is back there. So let's go and try this one more time. So the Diffuse Glow kind of just gives her a more softer, angelic appearance. Actually, let's see, how do we like that? Okay, there we go. See, it just makes it more softer. So pretty much in a nutshell, that is what I do. And I've decided now, oh crap, what did I just do? I've decided that I actually don't like, no, I guess I have to, oh crap. Well, see, that's what I said. I don't like this little logo here. So if you don't like it, you can just delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and recreate another text Um, really, really fast. Okay, so now that I have gone ahead and selected my my text here, um, it's easy to change it. You just go ahead and select it all and you can change it in here if you want or you can also go ahead and change it in here as well. There you go. So we're gonna make that one white real fast. I know I already did this, but I'm just gonna show you one more time. So um, I, like I said, personally, I like bigger, bolder sta uh, statement thumbnail sort of things um like this guy is pretty good and you can make him a little bit a little bit bigger so I like him the most and uh again what I like to do is go ahead and uh place a drop shadow sometimes the buttons get stuck a drop shadow um a stroke it's probably going to be the exact same thing as we just did but that is totally okay and um I think that's about it I might use a gradient effect on this no, I think we're just going to stick with this guy and maybe make it a different color, like a pinky color or something. A little more, there we go. Something with a little light tinge or something else to it. Alrighty, guys. Well, I think that is just about it. I think that's pretty much, I mean, I kind of like the bright green. I'm going to be honest, I kind of like the bright green. So, let me see. All right. Hopefully you guys don't mind here. What about a ooh wee girl? Mm -mm. Okay, just leave it how it was. So yeah, I think I like the bright green. Um, I have a way of kind of making this look a little more prettier, but for now, that's what I'm gonna do. So when you go about saving your images, um, all that you do is right click, flatten image. So it's one big file because you can't save it unless you do it. Then you go to file, save as, and then um, you, I'm just gonna save it in here. Then you just mark it. So we're gonna say P, uh, P, PS Tut. And I like to use the PNG file. So there you go. And now your image is saved. I like to do interlaced, just looks cleaner. And there you go, pretty much. That is about it. You have your image, everything's done, and you can go ahead and upload it to YouTube. So I hope it was helpful. I know this one might be a little bit crazy and all over the place, but actually, you know what? I did my best and I think I presented it pretty well. I gave you some ideas and if there's any other additional information that you want to know, I'm pretty sure I'll, I can answer all your questions or I can, you know, put in some information in the description bar. So check the description bar for, um, you know, the, the thumbnail sizing, uh, what kind of brushes I like to use, where I get them. Um, and just a few other tips and tricks. So I hope you guys enjoyed Don't forget to go on comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below where the sun does not shine. And I will see you all next time. Bye guys.